Beware of fruitless spiritual pursuits. So from this passage, Paul outlines, I don't know if you caught it, but he outlines three fruitless spiritual pursuits that people run after. And then he explains why exactly they're fruitless, why they're futile. So let's work our way through each one of them, right? Because Paul starts by saying one of the fruitless pursuits you can go after, spiritually fruitless pursuits, is ritualistic religion. And it is fruitless because, he says, it's merely a shadow. It's merely a shadow of the things to come in verse 16 and 17. Like the religious rituals, or these religious rituals that he lists up in here that this false teacher was pressing, at one point in Israel's history, Those rituals served a purpose of distinguishing the Jews as God's people. But now that Christ has come, they're only a shadow. All of those Old Testament laws, festivals, dietary restrictions were shadows. The Bible says those laws, those rituals served as a guardian, like a navigational system pointing to something else. They never were designed to save you. They were designed to remind you that there's a great need and there's a great redeemer coming to to, to meet those needs. Jesus himself says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, that all the righteous requirements of the law were fulfilled by him. Fruitless pursuit number two is what Paul would describe as spiritual experiences, or we could use the word mystical experiences, and they're fruitless because according to Paul, he says they're basically puffed up deception. I love his choice of words. Puffed up deception. Look at verse 18 and 19. There are some within the church who would say that there are certain, what I would describe as varsity level spiritual gifts or spiritual abilities or spiritual experiences that are real indicators of true spirit of true Christianity. And that until you have these spiritual high experiences, you're not really walking in the spirit. And their claim to fame will may be that they've had visions and they've had dreams and they've had angelic visitations or they've had ecstatic experiences. And Paul is saying when you hear that kind of uber spiritual rhetoric that is devoid of the gospel, know in that moment that you're dealing with a false teacher. And the third one is a life of self-denial or or what he described as asceticism. And and it's, it's a fruitless spiritual pursuit because it's an exercise in futility. Look at verse 20 to 23 again. Paul says, he says, since you died with Christ to the elemental forces of this world, why, 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 as though you still belong to this world, do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not touch, do not taste, do not touch. These rules, which have nothing, which have to do with things that are all destined to perish with use, are based on nearly human commands and teachings. Such regulations have an appearance of wisdom, but with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in fixing what's really wrong with you. Like, why are you defining your faith by what you were just freed from? In fact, he writes a whole letter to the Christians in the church in Galatians that addresses the same issue, and there Paul just lets loose. He goes, how foolish can you be? In fact, he calls them, oh, you foolish Galatians. How foolish can you be? After starting your Christian lives in the spirit, why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? You were saved by grace. Now you're going to try and finish it by works? So listen, the reason why an extreme life of self-denial is spiritually fruitless is because the holiness that the person that you're trying to achieve by self-effort and self-sacrifice has already been given to you freely by faith. There is nothing and no thing more that you can add to your faith that'll make you appear any more holy before God. Now, let me be clear on something. While there is value, all right, so let's just get that out the way. There is value to living a minimalist lifestyle 
where you rid yourself of excesses in your life to focus on Jesus, right? There is value to that. However, here's the problem. You must continually guard against rooting your spiritual confidence in the things you're choosing to live without. Like, that's the problem. It's not the giving up. It's when you go, I am because, or I give up things, therefore I am. Like, that's the problem. When you root your confidence in the things you're doing without. The other problem is you must also be careful not to make your self-denying choices the spiritual standard by which everyone else now has to measure up to. And, and that's the message this morning. Beware of fruitless spiritual pursuits. Beware of chasing after this ascetic life as a way of validating your faith. Beware of ritualistic religion. Beware of mystical spiritual experiences as a way of validating the faith. In fact, the most fruitful and the most productive pursuit you will run after as a Christian will be to grow in your knowledge and in your faith in the person of Jesus Christ. 